Hello friends, this video on principles of inheritance part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With time came up other concepts of dominance because other scientists were also studying these uh, the, the field of genetics and they were also coming up with new results from new experiments. So there came the concept of incom incomplete dominance. So it is not it, it is not that every time there is one trait which will dominate and it will get expressed and the other trait will remain hidden. So there are scenarios where there is incomplete dominance. So I think by the name you can guess that means one trait will dominate only partially not completely. So let us see what is incomplete dominance. Now, appearance of an intermediate phenotype in a heterozygous obtained when two homozygous parents of different phenotypes are crossed. So, here in this case, an intermediate phenotype was obtained. Now, this was not the case with Mendel's experiment because Mendel found that in the F1 generation, all the plants were tall. So, there was no dwarf plant. That is why he gave the principle of dominance. But later it was found that in certain crosses, in there were examples, there were experiments which proved that sometimes it happens that if you cross two different uh, phenotypes, for example, if you cross a white flower with a red flower, sometimes you get a pink flower. So pink flower is an intermediate phenotype which is different from both the parents, right? So this scenario was given the name of incomplete dominance. So obviously Mendel's laws could not explain this scenario and that is why it came up a new concept of incomplete dominance. So Mendel was unaware of incomplete dominance. So as per Mendel, the phenotype of the offspring will be similar to one of the parents. So it has to be either as per Mendel, if, if a red flower is being crossed with white flower, the uh, offspring will either be red or white. It cannot be anything in between because Mendel believed that there is no blending between the alleles. So there, there is no intermediate phenotype which is possible, but that was not true. It was actually observed the other way around. So incomplete dominance is also known as semi-dominance. Semi means half. So that is what incomplete also means, like semi-dominance, half-dominance. Dominance only to some extent, not fully. So as I said, what was observed was that when a red flower was crossed with a white flower, what we got was a pink flower. So this pink flower was an intermediate phenotype. So it, it, it doesn't resemble any of its parents exactly. But at the same time, it is being formed due to blending of the red and the white color. So that is how it has been formed. So blending has occurred. So this is where the concept of incomplete dominance came up. So similarly, if you look at uh, even in case of human beings, if, if uh, the father has got curly hair and if the mother has extremely straight hair, it is quite possible that the offspring might have wavy hair. So the father has curly hair, the mother has straight hair and what about the offspring? The offspring has wavy hair. It is neither too straight nor too curly. So even this is an example of incomplete dominance. So now if you try to think of uh, your own, you will actually get to see so many examples of incomplete dominance. Sometimes it is seen that an organism which is maybe black in color, another organism white in color when they uh, are, they, a crossing is done between them, it is seen the organism which is produced is gray in color. So all these kind of scenarios come up due to blending and these are all examples of incomplete dominance. So let us look at a monohybrid cross for incomplete dominance. So what happens in such kind of a cross? So we will take the same example of the red flower and the white flower. But now we will talk in terms of the phenotypes and genotypes and we will try to see what exactly happens in incomplete dominance. So let us look at the monohybrid cross for an incomplete dominance. So first let us have a look at the parental generation. So here what are we going to do? We are going to cross white flowers with red flowers. And what is observed is when the red flowers and the white flowers are crossed with each other, the F1 generation has the pink flowers. So basically the red flowers are denoted by, you can write them as capital R, capital R, considering because we, we can see, are considering here that the parental generation was homozygous. So here also for the white flower it was small r, 
So if they were small r, small r. So what are the gametes do you think could this give? The only gamete that this could give was capital R. The gamete that this could give was small r. So what was the genotype for this? The pink flowers, they were capital R, small r. So the only difference is that as per Mendel, he said that okay, if capital R is dominating, it should have been all red flowers. But that was not the case. Here we saw that all the flowers were pink. So this showed that there was some sort of blending between the red and the white. And that is how an intermediate phenotype was formed. Now what happened beyond this in the F2 generation? Now if the pink flowers were allowed to cross with each other, I mean if they were allowed to self-pollinate, in that case what happened was that it was seen that if the pink flower self-pollinated, so this is also going to be RR. So what are the possible gametes that this can produce? Capital R and small r. The possible gametes that this can produce is capital R, small r. So now this capital R can combine with this capital R, this capital R could combine with this, small r could combine with this and small r could combine with this. These are all the possible outcomes. So as a result, the F2 generation had one red flower, two pink flowers and again white, one white flowers because this was capital R, capital R, this was capital R, small r, here capital R, small r and this was small r, small r. So here it was told that wherever the heterozygous condition came up, that represented a blend of the two colors. So all the heterozygous conditions, so this was red because both are capital R, this was white because it is homozygous and both are smaller but this was the heterozygote and that is why this was pink. So basically the process of crossing remained the same but here we saw that there was not no complete dominance. It was not that red color dominated over the white color. So instead they both mixed up together, they blended together to form pink flowers. So that was seen in case of incomplete dominance. Now let us look at incomplete dominance from the uh, from the Punnett square point of view. Let us try to draw the Punnett square for incomplete dominance. So if you talk about the parental generation, so how was the parental generation? It was homozygous red crossed with homozygous white. So what were the possible gametes from here? Capital R. Possible gametes from here was small r, right? So what would be the F1 generation? It will be capital R, small r, right? Now, this capital R, small r was further crossed with capital R, small r. So the possible gametes here was capital R, small r and here it was capital R, small r. So now we will draw the Punnett square. So for Punnett square, what do we do? It is going to be a square like this where we first write down the gametes. So the gametes on the topmost row and the gametes on the leftmost column, right? And now we write the combinations and this is how the combination looks like, right? So if you look at the output of the Punnett square, what do we see? This is going to be red, this is going to be pink, this is going to be pink and this is going to be white. So how many red flowers do we see? So the red flowers, just one red flower out of four, so that means 25% of the F2 generation were red. Now, if you look at the uh, white flowers, so again white flower was also just one out of four. So that is 25% of the output were white flowers. And what about the pink flowers? So the pink flowers, two of them were pink. So two out of four, so 50% of them were pink flowers. So you can say what is the gene, what is the phenotypic ratio here? So here the phenotypic ratio, so this was the F2 generation. So now if you talk about the phenotypic ratio here. Now just remember Mendel's law, rules of inheritance. As per Mendel's rule, the phenotypic ratio in this case would have been 3 is to 1. Because pink would have also come under the category of red. But here in this case the phenotypic ratio will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. Because red is to pink is to white. Now if you talk about the genotypic ratio, 
So the genotypic ratio is basically R R is to R small r is to small r small r. So this is also going to be 1 is to 2 is to 1. So in case of incomplete dominance, the phenotypic ratio and the genotypic ratio are the same. That is 1 is to 2 is to 1. Right. So this is how the uh, concept of incomplete dominance varied from Mendel's law of dominance. So I hope that the concept of incomplete dominance is now clear. Now there is yet another type of dominance and that is called code. Thank you. Please visit www.examclear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.